What's going on, Wolfpack? We're back with another episode of Pucking Around. I'm your host, Joe Pace, and my guest today is Coach David Heaps. How's it going, guys? Hey, happy to have you in studio. Oh, I'm happy to be here. So you got in town just a few days ago. We're ready to rock and roll. Uh, fans are probably going to see this as you guys are already up in Virginia. Yeah. So you guys will get on the ice Tuesday. This will drop on Wednesday. Okay. So, uh, you know, by then you probably already had cut three guys. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> not, 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 at that, not that early. Um, well, uh, the bus is in great shape. Mm -hmm. It looks good. It's running good. Yeah. So yeah, I'm excited. That was my job. You guys were in here. Booster Club helped you guys move into the apartments. I helped get the bus going. Yeah. Now it's your job to keep it going. Okay. 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 I'm very uh, mechanically inclined. Right. I, I greased the wheels. You just got to get it on the road. Yeah. Get it, get it back in one piece. Yeah. Well, okay. one, one piece definitely for sure. But uh, are you excited? I'm very excited. I'm, you know, it was a quick trip down. Uh, got to work here after it got moved in and, you know, ready to go here on media day. It's oh, boring. That's it? <laughs> yeah. That's an uneventful trip down. You didn't have a flat tire or anything? No. no Nothing? No, no flat tire. I drove. I drove. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the whole way, um, you, you didn't let your wife take over for no, she she drove, she drove a little bit, um, when I was getting a little heavy eyed. So, oh, so. that's a, that's a short trip to get heavy eyed, yeah. Well, I didn't sleep too well the night before, uh, what, just excited nerves? to get down here and get going. So, uh, she drove a little bit, uh, in Louisiana, uh, and then I picked it back up and drove the rest of the way. Okay, we're talking about the boss, yep. You know, you, you've been around, little college hockey, Finland, little yeah. coast. Did oh, you yeah. get to go on any trips with Alan? Uh, no, no not, none with Alan. Okay, first-hand experience, give me your best bus trip, which means your worst bus trip. I don't know if I can say the, the best bus trip. Uh. <laughs> no, well, like, when I say best, fans, we actually mean your worst experience ever on a bus. So I'll, I'll, I'll kick you off. I'll say we broke down one time on the side of the road. We were there so long. We had guys. We actually went for a hike in the woods wearing Burger King crowns. And then we <laughs> separated into two teams with sticks and we LARPed oh. in a field. And then uh, we actually <clears throat> took some photos in our Burger King crowns. And our team captain, uh, which wasn't me, Matt Robertson, native of Baton Rouge, actually crawled through a sewer drain from one side of the gas station to the other <laughs> through the storm drain down underground. So, And that was just because we were so bored and so many beers were consumed at that gas oh, station. Geez, yeah, I bet. Um, so I've got a couple really bad ones. Uh, my first year playing juniors in Dallas, we had a trip to Colorado, and we had a – it was a week-long trip. Seven days, five games. Um, after the fifth game, we were heading home. Our bus breaks down uh, in the middle of January, so it's freezing cold for us Texas boys. Um, bus breaks down. It gets going again, and then 10 miles down the road, it breaks down again. We have to get a bus out there, switch everything over, get back to Dallas uh, like 6 a.m. in the morning. You guys are prima donnas. You got another bus out there. We've yeah. had that happen. The bus went away, and we got in vans and stuff, <laughs> and had to keep going. Well, when I was in uh, when I was in Canada, we didn't even have a bus. We had a school bus. Oh, that's a good yeah, story. That was, that was I, so okay. We actually in the first year of the SPHL, Winston Salem had a team called the Polar Twins. Yeah. Same thing happened. Bus broke down. They didn't have a bus. I don't know if they called around and ended up renting one, but a school bus came and picked us up. And the coach, you know, no bathroom on a school bus. No. Coach legend Brian Wells took a funnel, an oil funnel, and jammed it between, you know how school bus doors have two that close in the yeah. middle? He jammed the funnel in the middle, and everyone just <laughs> let it let it flow right out the funnel, right onto the highway, just blowing out on other cars. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, no, we, uh, yeah, it was tough. I mean, the, the nice thing about the school bus is we didn't have very long road trips. I think the longest trip was like, two hours so oh, it wasn't on. wasn't too bad but it sucked if you you know were on the 
the bad list. So there was a lot the of Gatorade all... bottles filled with apple juice. Yeah, yeah, a lot of a lot of apple juice bottles for sure. I'm pucking around. That was pee, guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, there was a you know a funny story about a bus trip we did a bus jousting uh, from. We came back from El Paso, going to Dallas. Like two buses going at each <laughs> other, and you held your sticks <laughs> out the window and hit the other team in the other bus. Oh no, I wish that would have been a lot. Listen, a lot better. if we get a sponsor for this, two school buses, two hockey teams, medieval hockey jousting. <laughs> Forget the horses. We got iron lungs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, no, but so you'd have one guy at you know the back of the bus, one guy at the front. You'd be holding, you know, pillows or whatever you had, and you just start sprinting at each other, and whoever stayed up. So, like in football, the old Oklahoma drill. Yeah, exactly. So uh, you did the Oklahoma drill in the middle of the bus. Yeah, yeah. It was a it was a twelve hour bus ride home. We had to figure out something fun to do. Um, and I remember one of my good buddies, Brandon Christensen. He went up against our coach at the time, uh, uh, Mewitt. I forgot his oh. first name. Um, but yeah, Mewitt, Mewitt. Mewitt was a bigger guy, and Brandon was, you know thin as a pencil and Mew just stood still Brandon took off is running as fast as he can and Mew just dropped and knocked him back about four or five rows oh my gosh um, so yeah everyone was like yeah I'm not going against Mew anymore that's that's well, too extreme when you're on your first trip uh you know one of the one of the older guys Justin Barr me and him have probably a hundred bus stories from Danville so yeah. he can fill you in on all those ones uh, over the last couple of years, I posted one not that long ago. We did bus wrestling. Okay. Because we got all the seats cleared out in the mattresses. Yeah. In Port Huron, we had, you know, Prowler's Mania. Yeah. And we hosted wrestling events in the center there. And, uh, you know, guys got stomp, stomped on Ouch. all over. But uh, I think I lost, I lost the title in the video that you see. <laughs> there might have been some cheating from uh, Port Huron's head coach, Matt Graham. I had to help Dave Nippard get the pin on me. Oh, but uh, always someone cheating, huh? Yeah, there was always <laughs> a Vince McMahon cheating. But uh, so, you know, you guys, you guys are going to head up there next week. Uh, it's going to be exciting. Mm-hmm. You know, this is your first training camp in the Fed as a head coach. Yep. So, don't lose your voice. <laughs> You're gonna want to yell a lot. I'm probably gonna lose. Some of these guys haven't skated a lot this summer. Uh, well, they're gonna be in for a shock for sure, right? Uh, well, I feel like at this level, a lot of guys think it's like the '80s, where you could show up and get in shape at training camp. Yeah. Trust me, I was one of those guys. <laughs> Mainly because I lived in communities that didn't have summer ice. Yeah, yeah, and that's you know that's the difficult part. Uh, when some of these guys where they're located. You know, if they don't have the ice available to them, it, it just makes it that much harder for a training camp. And, you know, talking to Stoya about it as well, he's like, I skated once. I was like, ooh, no, you're going to be told, hurting. I told them a lot, of, a lot of these guys, I was like, numerous seasons in the Fed, 15 years in the Fed, numerous years from Danville to Port Huron to here, last game, and then my next skate was the first day of training camp. Oh, geez. Just all summer off the ice, and people are like, you look good. And I'm like, I actually miss it, so I'm like, having fun. Yeah. Like, I didn't skate all summer, and I'm like, oh, man, I'm going back on the ice. Like, I haven't even seen this gear. I'm like, what's in this bag? I forgot I had this. Yeah. <laughs> well, the worst was my first summer here. I just put the bag in the garage, didn't think anything of it. With the moisture and temperature oh. changes, my steel was so rusted. I pretty much I had to trash it and get new steel. I'm like, I was not ready for that. No, I learned my lesson: take the steel out during the summer, put it in your sock drawer. Yeah, keep it inside in the dresser. Oh yeah, nice and cool. Yeah, that's that's one thing that I was really bad at. Like I always left my steel in, and then when, when I started, when I started actually having to buy my own own skates uh when i was no longer playing i was like yeah, i'm gonna take this out this you know i, I don't want to get it rusted and i don't want to dull it out so oh i would gosh. always take it even today now like i still you know after every skate i pop my steel off dry everything take the insoles oh, out okay you're like, prima donna oh yeah oh, no yeah. i am i am with my skates i am I'm we're not very... pucking around that's too much for a coach yeah. there. <laughs> i'm but, particular about my skates for sure well so let the fans know who are you 
most excited to see on the ice some of the new guys, some of these new recruits, fans might not know them or just know them from other teams. I could tell you right off the bat, the Hussey brothers. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to see them in Seawolves uniforms. I know both of them. Uh, Brendan, he could play any position up front. Uh, great centerman, but you know he was a role player for years yeah. with Elmira and Watertown, Macon. So now seeing him in a bigger role, you know he's not afraid to do the gritty stuff. He's not a you know typical first line guy. That's a skill guy that you know doesn't want to get his you know hands dirty. It's yeah. like you'll see him below the goal line. You'll see him blocking shots because it's in his DNA. Uh, his brother, competitor, it doesn't matter who he's playing for, guy just wants to win, wants to stop pucks. Yeah. Greg just wants to win, and uh, he's you know he's a nasty goalie to play against. Yeah. You might get the lumber in the back of the legs. You might see him chasing you into the corner in a scrum. Who knows what it. happens? I love that, the old Ed Belfort kind yeah, of Yeah, I feel yeah. like he's got that DNA. Yeah. yeah. A little bit of Patrick Waugh. He must, if we should get him on here because I bet you his favorite goal, yeah. goalie growing up was one of those guys yeah it would have to be especially with the you know the hack and getting involved with it i love that kind of mentality with michael it scares me to death though when they when they go out and they're like getting in the scrum I'm like oh someone get in there and help him <laughs> um no but i'm i'm very excited to see you know guys like wonger on the ice um hussey obviously you know with his pedigree and what uh heard about him uh some of the younger guys like uh carter yeehaw I think he's going to be a huge factor with us this year. Um, now, now for the fans, it's Eha, Eha, not Eha. Yeah, not Eha, Eha. <laughs> okay, I'm just making sure because we got we got some cowboys out there. There, fans. yeah, yeah, no, and you know, with Carter being in Oklahoma, I'm sure he got that a, a lot. Uh, being at UCO. Um, so I'm sure he got that quite a bit. We should there. talk to him about a name change. Oh, <laughs> <Nickname. laughs> yeah. Yeehaw, yeehaw. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you know, we've got some young guys, you know, uh, Stacy coming in from uh, the N.A., uh, some great I'm, highlights. I'm not, not going to name names, but I think there's someone that found him, and it might have been Jason Wolf and myself. Yeah, it was uh, Jason or Scout, and then I was like all over Sam. I was like, "Get this guy signed." Yeah, I saw his stat line, his size, where he played, and I was like, "That was early in the summer." Yeah, yeah, he was, was one of the first signings, and I was like, "I was like North American League four years." I was like, "Get him!" And yeah. Sam's like, "He's got no points." I'm like, six foot two, like two fifteen, yeah. bunch of penalty minutes. I'll take this guy." Yeah, yeah, no, and you know he, the team he played with, uh, the Springfield Blues. Not the the greatest team, you know, usually mid pack, but you know that shows a lot. You know, with his stats and how he played there, it was great. Mid pack. Yeah. When Tony Cartelli coached that team back in the day, my buddies from Chicago played there. We had the Jackalones. We had uh, we had the Rankins down there. Yeah. I think Roder played there. There's a bunch of guys from Chicago that played their old CYA guys, and they were an awesome team. Yeah, no, it, I mean it. It is a great organization. They've always had. You know, the no, but they teams, fell off. But they they fell, they fell off, off. Uh, for a couple of years there. But they, I mean, they weren't in the basement or anything like that. But um, yeah, either, they just weren't the usual competitive selves they were. Right? No, they were I'm still I'm sure good. I'm sure it fell off after a while. But yeah, uh, a long time ago, early two thousands, they were a dangerous team. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember watching you know teams like uh, the Texas Tornadoes when they would when the NA just had you know. A handful of teams and you know the anchorage team would come down uh, st louis would come down not st louis uh, springfield would come down like everyone was playing everybody and it was just it was an incredible atmosphere watching some of those games and seeing the oh well level. and they they were a league the north american league uh they were the last junior league where if you were over 18, you could just take the half shield and cage off yeah and go no shield like you were in the nhl yeah. And that that was different seeing a 19-year-old with no shield. And when I was, like, 14, they looked like they were 26. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely... They were, a, like, men. Yeah, it's definitely a different game from from then to now. Like, you see, you know, back back in the early 2000s, the small guy was 6'1", and now it's like, that's the big guy. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, Games changed, and we're not pucking around, guys. No, no, no we're not. Um, Don't tell me to wrap it up. We're in a great conversation right now. We got our engineer, John, back here telling me what to do. 
give you like two minutes, you know? Oh, two gosh, minutes. guys, he gave us what the two can minute you do in warning. Two minutes? It's football season. It's football season, and he's given us the two minute warning. So I'll name some guys. Uh, can't wait for you to see Costello on the ice, yeah. uh, you know, Don Carter Jr. Um, you know, obviously Barzy Anderson, uh, Curtis Hansen's another one, uh, Haskins, but, uh, these are some of the guys that in between Baton Rouge last year mm. and the Sea Wolves, these are some guys that I think will be some of your go-to guys, some of your favorites and, yeah. you know. Obviously, if they showed up ready and in shape. Yeah. yeah and no, we're not pucking around. You're not in shape. You're not playing for his team. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm like I said, you know, it's, I'm excited about it, seeing that, all the guys, seeing what they're able to do, seeing how they're going to fit into the systems and everything that we're going to put in place. And I think, I think the fans are going to be really excited about what we have on the ice this year. So Tuesday, you guys skate twice? Uh, so we we are technically because we have a three-hour skate, but we have a Zam in between. So each day we have So a it's going to be like hour and a half, Zam, zam cut, and hour. then go back on for like an hour? Yeah, so yeah, that's how we do it. So I reserve the ice for three hours and 15 minutes each day. So we'll get an uh, hour and a half Zam, hour and a half. So I like that because sometimes we go like an hour, hour and a half in the morning. Then you have you get off and you have lunch and then a little like break, maybe two, three hours. And yeah. then you're back on at like 5 p.m. And your gear is soaking wet. Yeah. And, and then was... you're going back on for an hour and a half, two hours then. And you're tired. You had this break. You ate lunch. Usually yeah. lunch is crap. And it's like pizza or like hot dogs. Yeah, or like, exactly. You and... know, tater tots or some <laughs> shit. <laughs> that was, that was one around. of the uh, that was one of the main factors of putting the ice all together. Simply because, you know, I don't want the guys having the cold gear on. Oh, you're yeah. so nice. Well, no, hold on. I mean, you're, are then you it, it gives around? Them, it gives it gives them plenty of time to recover between the next skate. They don't have to, you know, worry about going through the motions again and then putting all their gear on, then recovering again and again. No, so I like, like not having hours. to stretch out again, not having to warm yeah. up again, not having to tape my stick again. Yeah, well, put and the I'm a prima donna. You're retaping yeah. your stick after one practice? Come Listen, on. Listen, not me, but have you met some of these guys? Yeah. Every period. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, <laughs> I sometimes kept my tape on for like a month. Yeah. No, I, I just put more wax on it. Just <laughs> throw more cold weather surf wax on that thing and I'm good. I think I still have the same tape on my, I mean, I don't play anymore. I just coach, but I think I've had the same tape job for the last two months. That's good. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah. That's a good coach. Yeah. Not wasting tape. You a surfer, John? I've surfed. On vacation? This yeah, guy's a big vacation cool. guy. Our engineer, John, our media guy, is a big vacation guy. What's so vacation? Bad. Most times for work. Listen, he's been to Mexico three times since I met him. But you got the shirt on. Listen, this, hey, this shirt. Is a fancy shirt. Does day. anyone see who's on this shirt? <laughs> yes. He's mixed in there. You might That's not be able awesome. to see it. We got chunk from the goonies on here this is a goonies shirt that's right so you could zoom in this shirt we're not going to say who makes this shirt because they're not a sponsor of the podcast but listen this is the chunk truffle shuffle shirt it's all about one eye willy on here you see there's a skull somewhere on there uh, there's a one eye willy yeah there's a skull Look, right there, there he is there's one eye willy yeah not that one eye willy <laughs> the one from the goonies but yeah, goonies, i wouldn't be looking for that listen, one i promise you I, that. I wore this today i just saw Goonies 2 is coming out. They're doing the remake oh, really? or I don't know. I don't know if they're getting some of the original cast back in it. Yeah. But I think it is going to be awesome. I feel like it's going to be one of those things where their kids are now like hunting for some Goonies treasure. Yeah, absolutely. Or maybe the Vitellis get out of jail and chase <laughs> down everyone, try to whack them for getting them arrested. <laughs> you know, I actually watched Vengeance the Goonies. Vengeance for their uh... mother. <laughs> <laughs> I watched the Goonies uh, last month or the month before for the first time in years, and I was like rewatched it. I've seen it many times. Um, I was like, man, this still holds up. Well, you could still go out there in Portland or it's in Oregon. You'd still visit the street. The house is owned by someone now who doesn't let people like take pictures in front of it. If you do mm. the truffle shuffle in front of his house, he tries to get you arrested. But you could still go out to the beach and the same rocks that are out there, those famous rocks yeah. out in, uh, is it in Portland? I know it's on the coast. So it's outside of Portland on the coast in Oregon, but those rocks yeah. where, the, where the movie finishes. Yeah. yeah I but, don't know uh, why he's getting that upset about, you know, 
people taking pictures in front of their houses. At least he's not getting pizza he's thrown on the roof. He's a loot. Oh, that guy in New Mexico. <laughs> yeah. Heisenberg's house yeah, from Breaking yeah, Bad. Yeah. I remember I had a couple high school uh, classmates who, you know, would post pictures like they'd drive out to New Mexico for whatever reason and they just throw pizza Just on throw his pizza house. up there. And I was like, Whoa. What are you doing? I hope you're doing more in New Mexico than just that. <laughs> nope, that's it, guys. <clears throat> now, hopefully they're not doing more because if they are, they probably have an RV out in the desert and we know what they're doing. <laughs> and we're not fucking around. Yeah. But yeah, uh, no, absolutely. No, this was a great episode. I think uh, you know you guys are going to have a lot of fun up there. You got two exhibition games. Mm -hmm. Both games have now changed, and you are playing the you're playing in playing the whatever they are the Bobcats. Yeah. I couldn't even think of their name. Yeah. I, I hate them so much. <laughs> but you're playing the Blue Ridge Bobcats Friday night and Saturday night. Yep. Originally, you were going to play the Thunderbirds Friday and the Bobcats Saturday. Thunderbirds, mm -hmm. they chickened out like birds. They chickened <laughs> out. Those Thunderbirds chickened out. They want to stay down there in Winston-Salem and scrimmage each other. Yeah. So are you guys, you think you're going to get any other inner squad scrimmages in before those exhibition games? It's it's tough. I mean, you know, we may use one of the days, uh, one of the second halves of practice to kind of go through, you know, like a walkthrough, essentially, a full game walkthrough, have the guys uh, scrimmage. But again, you know, we've got a lot of guys at SP camps right now, so it's tough to see, depending on the numbers, we may cut it back to, you know, last 30 minutes, have a little in a squad. Well. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, I can't wait to see you guys on the ice. Uh, first game. On the road are those exhibition games, but first regular season game of the year is on the road over in Baton Rouge. I know a bunch of us are going to be there. <laughs> yep, cough right in my mic, Sorry. so I hear it in the headphones. But uh, media team's going. I'm going. It's uh, a Thursday night. Uh, yep. John Clement's going to be live on that broadcast, uh, live from Baton Rouge. Just mm -hmm. like today, we're live from Omni and Golfport, the Omni Studios. Check them out, Omni .com, myomni.com. And, uh, you know, talk, support, secure. Yep. So Omni, they got everything. The phones are amazing. I love using the phones in the office. And uh, a bunch of businesses in town are switching over to uh, Omni Talk. And if you are interested in switching your house phone over to Omni Talk or your business phones, reach out to Omni, get a quote. A quote is free, but if you get their service, use Pace 50. You get 50% off your first month. And... <laughs> Right? Fans love that. Yeah. Love saving money. Oh, yeah. And listen, you got to stretch your dollar. Yeah, You got to stretch your economy. dollar nowadays. And Omni is saving people up to 40% on their phone bill. If you switch from any company, you're saving 40%. Do you, who doesn't want to save 40%? I don't know. I mean, That's I a good thing. Everyone wants I to save. I think some people save up to 50 if you're switching from AT and whatever yeah. those jokers <laughs> those jokers they probably have the highest phone bills yeah uh, it's, and they, they transfer a bunch of jobs out of the u.s mm -hmm. over to like overseas yeah maybe yeah, the like... indies Oof. and the, you know what <laughs> i don't like companies that do that so yeah no, but it's, uh it's tough another company that doesn't transfer jobs overseas is firestone off Pops Ferry Road. Yeah. Have you been there yet? No, not yet. You um, need an oil change? I, I'm going to need one soon, so I'll definitely. Uh, well, you got to head over to Firestone. Oh, yeah, I will. And at last one, I want to give Eddie Seal in Long Beach a shout out. Eddie Seal's Automotive Services. Now they have a new storage facility in the back that's opening up any day. It is boat and RV storage. They got covered and uncovered spots. They got power and water back there. It's all fenced in and secure. And they got cameras. Yeah. And those cameras are provided by, go ahead, take a guess. Omnitech. Yep, you All know right. it. They are secured by Omni back there, so, uh, you know, it, it, settle the, down, the fans. Big round of applause. I know, I it, it. but uh, they they could see everything 24 hours a day, so your boats, RVs are all safe back there, and we're not pucking around. That's great. So, yeah. guys, we'll be back next week with another episode. I think uh, John Clement is going to be sitting down with one of the players, and uh, they're yeah. going to be catching up. Yep. So I wish you the best of luck at training camp. I can't wait to see you guys get back here in one piece. You know, you know, healthy. a little bit more of a raspier voice for me. So 
It'll be it'll be a fun. Yeah, you will sound like this. <laughs> yeah, you'll sound like a character from The Sopranos, probably. Yeah, yeah, sound hey, like a Tony. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sound like I've been smoking twelve packs a day for twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> you might be smoking twelve packs a day <laughs> by the end of training camp. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> I really hope not. You might be dipping a whole can a day. Oh, geez, geez, it's been a while. Been Get him some Zins. <laughs> oh, they're not a sponsor. Don't buy Zins. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, this was awesome. Guys, this is the Puck and Round Podcast. Subscribe on YouTube, listen on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, and uh, you know, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks, Wolfpack. Thank you, guys. Oh!